Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we're taking a look back at what has, in my mind, become one of the most pointless and one of the most... It, it, it's, a, it's pretty much the poster child for how a lot of modern premium ships go. They get released, they're pre solid at released, and then very quickly, they kind of just fall off. And that is the Tier 8 Premium American Large Cruiser, the Congress. Now, the Congress was released quite some time after the Alaska was removed. If you take a look at the Congress, I mean, it's essentially an Alaska with two less guns, a little bit less HP, and of course, it can't, it can't um, mount the final mod slot. So, on paper, you think, okay, so a more baked down Alaska, but at Tier 8 instead of Tier 9, surely it must be a great ship. You know, when it was released, it wasn't terrible, it was pretty decent. And I believe I even said in my review for it, it's a pretty solid pickup if you miss the Alaska. However, in today's Wood Warships, I would highly advise against picking up the Congress, because, oh my god, this thing is terrible today. It's so bad. And we're going to talk about why right here. So if you do find yourself enjoying the view, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It helps out with the YouTube side of things. Also, next weekend, if you find yourself in the uh, Bay Area, I will be attending CarrierCon aboard the Hornet. I was invited to come out and be on one of their panels for their convention. This is their annual pop culture convention, uh, convention aboard the USS Hornet in Alameda, California. So I will be there if you want to see IRL Sea Lord. So make sure to come out and check that event out next weekend. So anyway, back to the Congress. Now the Congress is actually a paper design for what would become the Alaska, except the turret position is wrong instead of the triple turret being in the number two turret slot that should be in the number three turret slot why did the board gang put it in the number two instead of the number three slot um i don't know because if it was in the number three slot that would be a lot a lot more better than what we have here so the congress what makes it different from the Alaska? Let's start there. Well, once she has about 6,000 less HP than the Alaska, so she starts with 54,000. Um, well, she has 54,000 HP with the build that I do have on her. I do believe I have Survivability Expert on Halsey. Yep, I do. So she has 54,000 HP with Halsey. So you take that off, that'll drop her down to what? A about 52,000 HP and change before uh, SE is equipped. So about, what's that, 10,000 less HP than the Alaska. So, yeah, I mean, that's understandable too because it is a tier 8 ship and she does retain the Alaska armor, which means that the hull of the Congress does have 27 millimeter plating. That is a giant middle finger to anything that's not a 16 inch or above gun. Which, considering this is a tier 8 ship, and can see down to tier 6 games, that's obviously a very big pickup. This is a ship that can face tank most of the battleship it sees uh, from tier 8 down. Now, of course, tier 8 up, you know, less so. But when it is top tier, it is really darn tanky. Now, she does also lose a heal for this. I only have three heals, not because I forgot to take superintendent, but because the Congress starts with two. Which, yeah, that um, sucks in today's World of Warships. Um, and it was a, a, a deal, a big deal back when the ship was, a, was released too. Because it's not like this ship was released, you know, three or four years ago. It was, she was released, I think, a little over a year or so ago. Maybe two years ago. And in that day, day and age, of course, HE Spam was still very much very much what it is today so that was a, a big deal too and that, that's of course a big deal with these large cruisers through and through but her n not having that you know third base heal hasn't done her any favors uh in her evolution from her release to now either now my biggest gripe with this thing is with the guns so you get two less guns instead of nine you have seven here with the congress now it does still have the mark h super heavy ap which means that these 305 millimeter guns hit like more like 14 or 15 inch guns which, I mean, hey, that's the American thing. The Mark 8 Super Heavy AP gives you good pin angles, makes your AP shells hit a lot harder than they normally would. So she does have that going for her. So when you do get the shells to bite, they do bite quite hard, especially on other cruisers that, you know, they're, they're trying to be a little cheeky, give you too much angle, then boom, that Mark 8 Heavy AP hits and Citadel's them, which is very good. 
The thing is though, you'll be surprised how much two less guns make a difference, especially on uh, a ship that's more akin to a battleship than a cruiser. Most cruisers, sure, you can remove a couple of guns here and there, and they've done that with some other premium cruisers, and yeah, there's a, there's a reduction in fire, but with the rapid fire nature of the guns, it's not too much of a big deal, like you can still burn stuff down. With the Congress, those two less shells make one hell of a difference. If you take an Alaska out, you can see that, yeah, the dispersion's pretty good, but you normally have a shell or two that goes, you know, a little wide, a little short, something like that. You take those two shells off, and then now you think, okay, you have two less guns, so those two shells that are probably going to go wide are probably, of course, you know, going to reduce the number of shells hitting the target from, like, you know, with the Alaska 7 to 6 to now 5 to 4 with the Congress, because of course, you know, it's got to be balanced. You can't just remove two guns and let it keep the uh, amazing, well, not, not really amazing, but, but the good accuracy of the Alaska. They got to balance it, because this, this, this thing can see tier 8. So, obviously, you have subpar dispersion with less guns than the Alaska. And you cannot fit the final mod slot, so you can't take the reload module to get your DPM any lower. So you're stuck with the base DPM time of 21 seconds, I do believe it is. Uh, yeah, 22 seconds actually. And you can't get that down. On the Alaska, with the module, you can get that reload time down to 17.6 seconds. With 9 guns. So, what winds up happening is that you're in a tier 8 ship, so, you know, naturally the way matchmaking is, you get stuck in a tier 10 game, and you have guns that are the same as the Alaska, but you have two less guns, they're not as accurate, and they reload slower. Which means that you're obviously lagging behind. And plus two, you do have a maximum range of 17.5 kilometers. Now, you can, if you want to, slot the spotting aircraft, which can get that out, but you do have to give up your radar for that, which is one of the big attractions of the ship. Tier 8 cruiser with American radar. You can also fit Hydroacoustic Search or DFAA in a separate slot. I keep Hydro because more utility, which, again, is a strong suit of the Congress. So, then, when you get stuck in those high tier games, and because your guns aren't that accurate, and because, you know, not like, it's not like every shell is going to go where you aim, right? You know, you may aim for their armor belt, but you might have some shells hit the superstructure. You might have some shells hit a part of the armor that you can't pin with the AP. You might want to switch to HE. One of the big things about the Alaska is that, well, if she can't citadel you to death, she can sure burn you down. And you can attempt to do that in the Congress here, but again, two less shells, much slower reload time. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um... That's not going to go quite well. And what you get at the end of the day is a ship that struggles to keep up when it's mostly going to be double up tier to tier 10. And when engagement rangers have already been pushed further back by the full release of submarines, you have a ship that really struggles to do anything in higher tier games, in most higher tier games. Now, yes, when games are closer and you can get into medium to close range, use your radar, spot enemy ships, Use your AP to catch those cruisers and battleships that might be showing you your broadside. You can do quite decently well in a match. But the fact of the matter is, with the way that most games go nowadays, you're going to be struggling to do like, you know, 60, 70k a game. Especially with how one side a lot of games are nowadays. The match you're watching in the background right now was the closest thing I had to a, a solid match in the, uh, how long have I, have, I, have, I, have I been playing for? In the three hours I've been playing to try and get some decent Congress footage. And it's still pretty lopsided. We just had a moment where everyone was fairly close. I was able to do uh, Congress slash Alaska things. And then, well, the game ended because it was pretty lopsided. And this is still a tier 8 that's going to run you, I think it's $45 in the premium shop right now. US, that is. And... The big monkey wrench in the existence of the Congress is really the fact that Alaska is still available on Black Friday. You can still pick her up. It's the Alaska B, but it's the exact same ship as the Alaska for a considerable amount of money more. You know, there's a big pay jump from Tier 8 to Tier 9. 
at a tier eight, you're only paying you know forty five bucks for premiums. Tier nine, seventy ish dollars. Usually on Black Friday, you know, there's more towards sixty ish. But I mean, still, if you want an Alaska, just wait for Black Friday and get an Alaska. Don't buy the Congress because it's it's not aged well. It's not aged well at all. And she's just honestly a lot more frustrating than she is fun. Sure, there's a lot of utility there. You know, in like a tier 8 rank situation when it's just tier 8 ships, sure, probably would be a solid pick. But for random battles, no, not, not really. What's really telling is that you don't see this ship a lot. At all. I honestly can't remember the last time I saw a Congress in game that wasn't me playing this ship today. And I haven't touched the ship in a long time either uh, because, shoot, we, we played her when she came out, played her in stream a couple of times. I think I, you know, kind of bounced back and forth between her and some other ships for, like, again, the, the first, what, three or four weeks of her release. But, yeah, she's just not really that fun to play. It's really frustrating. And, you know, again, it's cool that you have 27 millimeters of bow and stern armor. You can shove your bow in the in the face of most battleships you're going to see when you're top tier and just laugh at them but i mean like when you get to tier 10 you're just a gimped alaska at the end of the day so yeah not worth the 45 bucks in my mind anymore it's pretty pointless considering the alaska is still available um i mean shoot if, if they do wind up finally just not selling the black friday ships anymore okay you know it, it is the next best thing to alaska that you can get but I don't see them doing that. They've been doing that for the past five years. So that's what makes this ship pointless in my opinion. You can still get the Alaska in November. So, yeah. Don't waste your money on this thing, guys. There's better ships out that you, that you can buy at Tier 8. There's a whole host of really good Tier 8 cruisers. You want a really good cruiser, you can pick up an Otago. Uh, she was in our Top 5 video yesterday if you want to check that out. Or just check out my Otago video. Uh, for an in-depth review of that ship, a much better usage of 45 bucks than this thing right here. So hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on way to 50,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday, a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.